Hey everybody, it's your boy, the Red Mage Eldena Doublecast, a.k.a. Milford Fillmore. That one was really bad. And welcome to my second annual Q&A video celebrating a hundred thousand subscribers. Why do I have so many? I don't understand. Anyway, I got a whole bunch of questions I'm gonna answer from y'all. Uh, no script and three shots of rum in me, so let's get into it. Callie asks, favorite terrible movie? So I'm not actually that into, like, so bad it's good movies other than, like, The Room, which is a classic and I can still watch and have a good time with to this day. I do, however, have a couple of uh, so bad it's good OVAs, interestingly. Um, the ones that come to mind immediately are Garzy's Wing and Aiken. Um, Garzy's Wing, if you haven't seen it, if you're, if you're a weeb and you're looking for something uh, terrible to watch with some friends uh, for like uh, like a bad movie night or something, highly recommend Garzy's Wing. That is some top quality bad content right there. Aiken, you, you, don't, you probably don't want to watch that one with friends, um, and you may not even want to watch it alone. It is in... Uh... Used to this, hold it right there. Wow! Do it again! Watch it! Of course not! It's a bad joke! It's a bad joke! Oh, but it's squeezing me! I'm sorry! It's an acquired taste, but uh, for me anyway, it, it hits that very specific spot of being like terrible in a way that I find funny. A lot of people will just think it's terrible in a terrible way. What, what can you do, you know? Different strokes. Google Hushabai Valley asks, favorite musical artists, in parentheses, and why is it exclusively Death Grips? <laughs> I actually answered this in my last Q&A video, which you can go watch probably up here, maybe? Up, up here? I don't know what direction I'll be facing. Um, but uh, yeah, I've already listed sort of my favorite artists. I didn't mention Death Grips in that last list, but I do really like them. Um, in particular, their first two albums. There's a lot of really good stuff on there. Um, but um, yeah, other than them, as of late, there actually is one artist who I would have added to that list uh, from last time, how'd I done it now, which is uh, 100 Gex. I've been getting very into them lately. Uh, definitely not for everyone, but I think they're, uh, they're, they're doing something really unique, and I appreciate that. He Bro Hammer asks, if you made a podcast, what would it be about? Well, with any luck, you'll find out in just a few days. Subspace Jet Witch asks, which fandom do you dread the most? So I have previously said that there are no fandoms that I refuse to cover other than, you know, uh, boy bands and other kinds of real people fic. Um, however, since making that statement, I have encountered a few that, you know, like just on principle, I have decided I'm not going to touch. Um, and I think of those, the one that inspires the most dread in me, easily Gravity Falls. Um, I have seen nothing good come out of the shipping from that fandom, and I am not touching it with a 10-foot pole. Just, just, no. No way. Absolutely not. Deadpants182 says, Would you rather read a wholesome Yuri romance with little or no conflict, or a dramatic Yuri romance with a lot of conflict? Well, see, that depends on if we're controlling for quality or not. Um, if we are controlling for quality, meaning that regardless of which option I'm, I pick, I'm guaranteed to get something that's, like, at least pretty good, then I'm gonna go for the more dramatic Yuri. Um... I like stories with, you know, a bit more conflict in them. I tend to prefer drama and angst to fluff. I like seeing characters, you know, going through it. Um, but um, if we're not controlling for quality, if I'm just picking sort of a random story from the two pools of, like, all of the content in those categories, then I'm going to pick the fluffy Yuri, the, the wholesome Yuri, because... 
even though I like drama more, I think good fluff is easier to write than good drama. And so if I'm picking a random dramatic Yuri, there's like a good chance I'm going to get something that's like re really, really trashy. Like, not going to lie. Andre Martel asks, how did meme madness become a thing? Meme madness was the result of me in my sophomore year of college having way too much time on my hands and liking March Madness conceptually because I like tournament brackets, but also not caring about basketball and being like, hmm, surely there is some way I can like create something similar to March Madness that's relevant to my interests. <laughs> Memes, of course. And so I made a 64 meme bracket. I made my sweet mates debate through it and pick a winner. And then we thought it was funny enough that we invited more people next year and it's just been going ever since. The Diplomancer asks, funniest D&D story? Right, so some of my friends started a campaign a while ago um, and they invited, among other people, my friend Maria, aka Twitter user at the Queen of Memes, who you should all go follow. Um, the thing was that Maria at the time had never played D&D before and she's not like an artist or a writer, so she doesn't have, you know, a mountain of OCs that she can draw from when creating a character. So she was sort of like going through how to make a character with the DM, um, and the DM was very like specific, like he wanted everyone to lay out in advance like what their character was going to be like in terms of personality and how they were going to play them because um, the DM had had some bad experiences with people uh, surprising him by playing, uh, I believe it was Loli Tieflings, um, where he, that happened to him more than once and it really pissed him off. So he demanded like pre-approval on all of our character personalities. And because, you know, Maria didn't have any particular ideas, they uh, came to sort of a really generic bard and you know it was fine it's like you know it's your first character whatever you'll figure it out um but we get to the table for the first session and you know maria gets her first opportunity to talk and <laughs> all of a sudden like something clicks in her and she gets it and out of nowhere um she becomes Ebony Darkness Dementia Ravenway, and that was her character for the rest of the campaign. And the DM was not happy with that, but I was. <laughs> Alexander Lieberman asks, pets? So I'm a big cat person, but unfortunately I do not have a cat right now. Um, that's actually because um, I decided a while ago that if I ever get a cat, I'd want to wait until I have, like, a really big house because I want the cat to have, like, a lot of space to run around in because that just seems fun for the cat. Um, and right now I live in, like, a really tiny studio apartment, so it's just, it, you know, it'd, it'd feel very cramped to have a cat in here. Twinkle Litchy asks, What are your methods of research for the What Your Favorite Ship Says About You videos uh, for the fandoms you have less knowledge of? Of course. Uh, my research process is basically I watch the show or read the webcomic or play the game or whatever. I can I consume the product um, and then I write up like a first draft based on my initial impressions of the characters. I send it off to a friend of mine who is, you know, more involved in the fandom. So they might be familiar with, you know, the fan fiction tropes or fanon and stuff like that. They give it a look over, help me fill in some of the gaps. If there are some jokes that need punching up, they'll make some suggestions. We go back and forth for a bit, and uh, that that's pretty much it. It's it's pretty straightforward. I just I just watch the show and write the video. It's not not a ton else that goes on. Seductively Salad asks, do you plan on doing more Let's Plays after Pokemon or other less scripted stuff? I'm probably not going to do more Let's Plays just because um, I'm like, I don't know, I, I don't dislike doing the Pokemon Let's Play, but I'm not as excited about it as I am about making my other videos. Um, so I wouldn't want to do another Let's Play because it'd sort of be like, okay, well, I'm taking time away from making, you know, the ship videos, which I really love or when posting goes wrong, which I really love to sort of like half-heartedly produce this content that like 2,000 people are watching. And for the record, 
I love all 2,000 of you that are watching all the Let's Play episodes, but, you know, it's just, if I'm not feeling it, I'm not feeling it. There's nothing I can really do about that. I am looking to do uh, more unscripted content, specifically podcasting. Again, watch this space. Ranny Savani? Ronnie Savani? Oh, God. If you were an NPC in a video game, what kind of NPC would you be? Example, shop owner, neighbor... Oh, this is a really good one. I would be uh, the dude who is randomly chilling at, like, the bottom of the optional super dungeon, where if you, like, actually go through all, like, the arcane steps to go through everything that you had to pull off a game FAQ, because, like, it's not actually clear at all in the game how you're supposed to get through any of this, and, like, you reach me, and then I'll teach you, like, the ultimate secret move or give you the ultimate secret weapon or something like that. Like, I want to be that dude. That seems like a great NPC gig. I'm not gonna pronounce that. Would you win in a fight against a raccoon? No, raccoons are vicious, man. I am not fucking with raccoons. Raccoons are like, not only are they like bigger than you think they are, like they're weirdly large. They also have like, they're also unpredictable. They're very crafty animals. You never, you never know what they're gonna do next. And like the element of surprise um, is like, that works in your favor pretty heavily in a fight. You want to be unpredictable. A little worldly wise asks, most cursed thing you've seen while making one of your videos? Oh god, HIV Hamilton research exposed me to so, so, so much cursed content, and there was a lot to go through there, but the worst one was definitely um, the existence of uh, real people fiction, uh, between uh, Nate Silver and Harry Enten, and if you don't know who either of those guys are, good. But um, that was one of those concepts that, like, uh, it was implanted in my brain, and I just couldn't get it out no matter how desperately I wanted to, and the worst part of it was, like, it was super tangential to the video. It had nothing to do with the actual story. It was just that, like, one person who was kinda involved in that whole thing had written this, and it was just, like, a side scandal that came up while I was researching the video. Um, so, like, I know about this now, and, but, like, there's nothing I can do with that information. Like, it didn't benefit me at all to know this. It just sits in my mind, like, rotting a hole through my gray matter. Oh, God, another name I'm not even gonna try to pronounce. What are your favorite movies slash shows, live action or animated slash games, tabletop or video? Uh, already talked about my favorite video games before, but my favorite movie is Legally Blonde, and my favorite show is either Ruby or Love Live. DC Studios asks, what are some video ideas that you have but you are afraid to make? If you didn't have any, then here, what is the most toxic fandom that you have ever been in? Oh man, these are both juicy, so I'm gonna answer both of them. Um, in terms of video ideas that I've had but am afraid to make, I have a lot of ideas for video essays that, like, come up every so often, but the thing is, I already have two series that are kind of time-consuming to make, because I spend a lot of time watching stuff to research for the ship videos or just doing research for when posting goes wrong, on top of having, you know, a 40-hour-a-week day job. Um, so, like, if I wanted to do video essays, not only would I be, like, taking time away from series that people already like and that I like working on, um, but also I would be making something, like, new and unproven that I don't know if people actually want from me, and, like, on top of that, um, I'd just be, like, another dude on YouTube making video essays, and this isn't to, like, talk trash on video essays, because I love video essays, I watch a lot of them, and a lot of my favorite content creators are video essayists, but, like, there are so many people making video essays on YouTube! I feel like the market's kind of saturated, and so I don't know if I really want to get into it. As for the most toxic fandom I have ever been in, hands down, without a doubt, Hearthstone. Oh man, uh, that subreddit did not do good things to my mental health back when I was on it, let me tell you. Jensen asks, what are your favorite ship dynamics? Like, when you make fun of, like, men getting pegged, or, excuse me, men getting pegged. 
or wacky hijinks, after which hilarity ensues. Are there tropes like that that you enjoy? Uh, my favorite ship dynamics are probably sun lesbian, moon lesbian, uh, the inherent eroticism of trolling, uh, oh, the one about a girlfriend who can kick your ass, of course, um, and then, uh, oh, one that, like, I've had this concept for a joke for a while, but I haven't fit it into a video yet, which is uh, Lisa and lifeguard.mov. I see you don't have a lifeguard here at your beach. I'm not at the beach, this is a bathtub. Says M asks, do you think Tumblr will die in the next five years? I feel like at this point, Tumblr has, Tumblr's like a cockroach, you know? Like everything that is supposed to kill a website has already happened to Tumblr. Um, you know, it's lost a ton of money for the people who've owned it. There's been a mass exodus of users. I mean, people have been, were already leaving the site in huge numbers before the porn ban, and that only made it worse. Um, so like, and it's, it's still around despite all of that. I don't know why they keep Tumblr alive, but like, I don't know. I, I find it hard to believe it's gonna die when it just, nothing can seem to kill it. Um, I think a lot of that can actually be chalked up to the fact that it is unique among social media platforms in that like, um, it hasn't been very heavily commercialized because no one can figure out how to make money off it. Um, you know, it, it, there's like Tumblr clout is infamous for being completely useless. So you don't get nearly as much clout chasing as you do on like Twitter or God forbid, like Instagram or TikTok. It sort of got this like old school internet vibe to it in the sense of like, um, as like other websites have sort of pushed us to towards blending our real life and online lives more and more to the point where they're kind of indistinguishable from each other, Tumblr still has that degree of separation where like on, in, in real life, you know, you can be a reasonable normal person, but then on Tumblr, you can be a wackadoo honking your clown horn around as Sarah Zed once so uh, aptly put it. So I think because Tumblr is so unique, it like is kind of always going to have an a built-in audience, like it's going to have a very dedicated user base because you get something there you don't really get anywhere else, and I think that will keep it alive for the foreseeable future. Homopocalypse, nice, asks, sort of related to the question about Tumblr dying, how do you feel on Twitter being pretty much the most common space for fandoms now? I'm not thrilled with it, mainly because I don't like reading through really long tweet threads. Like, I'd rather just have the option to post, like, a long text post. I don't want to read through, like, anytime I see, like, one of 48 or something like that, I'm just like, nope, not, not interested. I pretend I do not see it. I don't care. Um, and then also I've heard that, like, compared to Tumblr, or at least how Tumblr used to be, uh, Twitter isn't very good for artists, um, which is like a very high priority in fandom spaces. I know at the very least, uh, the whole quote tweeting thing is really stupid because if you quote tweet an artist or you quote tweet their art, you're essentially stealing engagement from them. And like, that's just stupid. Like I wanna post your thing and it'd be cool to be able to comment on it without, you know, uh, keeping, hoarding your likes to myself. Like, that's just dumb. Sailor Foxhound asks, what's your absolute favorite Pokemon? Blaziken. Alexander Ramol asks, this may be a little late, but I would like to know this. Where does your feature on Let's Argue rank among your best internet moments? Yes, uh, that ranks very, very high for me. I have been watching Anthony Fantano for years now. I love all the Let's Argue videos, and so I was ex static when I finally got my 15 seconds of melon fame. For those of you who don't know what this uh, question is talking about, there's like a big music YouTuber who made a video that like one of my tweets got featured in not too long ago. Um, I'll link uh, to the video in the description if you're curious. Salmon and Soup asks, how did you find your niche? I don't see anyone else making content quite like yours, from the shipping videos to when posting goes wrong. What was the inspiration behind these ideas? 
ideas. So I talked about the origins of the shipping videos in the last Q&A. That was made as basically like this one-off joke for Tumblr that I then kept going because I realized that I could get clout from it. Um, so that's like probably why it doesn't look like a lot of other things on YouTube, because it wasn't even made for YouTube originally. Um, when posting goes wrong was, I mean, okay, it usually gets compared when people talk about it to like a halfway point between down the rabbit hole and internet historian, but the actual inspiration for it was uh, two videos from the series Pretty Good by John Boys, which were, um, uh, the Dumbest Boy Alive and Troy State DeVry, which, uh, if you haven't seen it, Troy State DeVry Pretty Good is, like, my favorite piece of long-form content on all of YouTube, so please, please check that out if you get the chance. Um, also all of Pretty Good, also all of Dorktown, also all of Chart Party, also all of Fighting in the Age of Loneliness. Just watch all the John Boys videos, they're all so good. Anna Savidra asks, what is your zodiac sign and what is your MBTI? Well, my star sign is Gemini. Yes, yes, I know, I know, I've heard it all before. As for the Myers-Briggs, I don't actually have a Myers-Briggs type because Every time I have taken a Myers-Briggs test, I've gotten a different result. Vaguely asks, if you could have any one superpower, what would it be? I'd pick uh, teleportation, because there's a lot of places I want to go, but a lot of them are very inconvenient to get to. Epic Joyful Creations asks, any predictions for Ruby Volume 8? Ooh, I'm gonna say there will be at least one major protagonist death, one major antagonist death, uh, one scene in which they try to make it look like a member of Team Ruby is going to die, and then they fake us out at the last second, and like, of course, they survive. Um, there will be no Bumblebee kiss. Uh, there will be more evidence that Rose Garden is endgame. And, most importantly, the whole season, my timeline will be absolutely full of people making unhinged horny posts about Salem's boobs. And finally, Wivy asks, I really gotta know who your best bang dream girl is. Well, Wivy, here's the thing, I'm not actually into Bandori. My friend wrote that video for me because she just loves Bandori so much that she wanted to see me make a video about it. Um, however, this does give me an idea for how I might be able to answer your question. Hey, Amelia, could you kin sign me a Bandori girl? It's for a video. Give her a minute to get back to me. Oh, oh, here we go. Well, 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 look how far we've come. Give me a second to think. Hmm, I'm gonna go with Mocha because she's the resident jokester slash meme lord who has a hard time taking anything seriously, but also uses that joking nature as a veneer to hide crippling doubts about herself. Damn. And that'll do it for the second annual double cast Q&A video. I hope you all have enjoyed this. Thank you everyone so much for subscribing and continuing to support my content. Here's to another 100,000 subs next year. Um, and I'll see y'all later.